Hey guys, so today we are sitting in Christchurch, New Zealand. What we want to tell you about are our top 10 must-have travel apps. Of course, this isn't uh, the definitive guide. This is just what we've been using the most during our travels. First, we're going to talk about the navigation apps. So I think the most obvious one is Google Maps. Uh, we use it at home, but we also use it here, and it's really cool because you can actually download the offline map. Basically, when you download it, you can still use it when you don't have service. Now to segue into another app, it's Google Translate, which like I knew about before, but there's this new feature, well I think it's new, we just found out about it. When we were in South America, you can take the camera and put it on a word and it will show you the translation of the word. It's amazing. And with Google Translate, it's like Google Maps, you have to download the offline language so I could use it when I didn't have service as well. The next app, Maps Me. It's pretty similar to Google Maps, but what's awesome about it is it has all of the hiking, all of the treks, off-road stuff. We could use it at Machu Picchu. Also, that has an offline version. If you're up in the mountains and you don't have service, as long as you have battery, the GPS will still work and you can still follow all these little treks. And I think it's good to have like two options because there's been times where I've tried to use Google Maps even when I have downloaded the map, the offline map, and it wouldn't work. So then I had to go to Maps Me and that seemed to always work, but it does kind of use up a little more battery, I think. A tip when you're using Maps Me, if you have an iPhone, put it on airplane mode and change your battery setting to low so that you don't take as much battery. Take Boom. up as much battery. So the first app in the utility cat category is XE Currency. So for this app, you can have 10 currencies saved so that you can monitor them as you're on your travels. It's really helpful before you go into a country so you know what to expect when you get there. If you're having to exchange money at the border, I like to screenshot it just in case, I don't know, I don't have reception and it doesn't load. The next app is TripAdvisor. This is another really popular go-to app. Yelp isn't here in <laughs> New Zealand or it's not in South America. You know, that is our go-to app in New York City for everything. So for us, TripAdvisor is almost the equivalent of Yelp International. It's just one of those important apps to have on your phone just in case you want to uh, look at the reviews because that's really the best place to get a gauge of where you're going is on what people say about it. Yeah, and also you can you can get tips for the tours, tips on like pricing. So some people may say like it's better to wait to buy, you know, the tour when you get there or to do it through an agency. And then Instagram. We all love Instagram. One of the things I picked up on is that when you're in a location, you can hit search, then go to places, and there's an option that says nearby. So it'll just like show you all the pictures nearby. So there may be like this really cool area and you didn't even know it was right under your nose. When we meet any travelers, we always ask them, do you have an Instagram? Because a lot of times you're gonna be going the same route or they'll have been places that you're going to go. Also, if we know we're going somewhere popular, maybe you'll go and look at the photos from that destination the day before you get there. So that way you kind of get an idea of what photos people have taken, which photos you like. Going hand in hand with Instagram is Visco, or V-S-C-O. This is just a really great app for editing photos. It makes it super simple, really easy user interface. It looks good. The photos always come out good. I mean, if you just wanna bring your Instagram photo game from here to maybe here, or here, you know, any of those <laughs> places, then, just download this app, learn how to use it a little bit. Sometimes just like a little tweak here, a little tweak there, straight and da da da, and your pictures will be awesome. Our third category is communication. Thankfully, we have technology that allows my mom to sleep better at night because she wants to always know. Yvonne, Amanda is all right. <laughs> Where I am, what I'm doing, and if I'm okay. We have Skype, FaceTime, and we have Facebook Messenger. 
Now, I have an iPhone, so I use FaceTime. My mom and dad have iPhones, so that's fine. He uses Facebook Messenger. It works pretty good. I think FaceTime, the signal's a little better, but um, it still works just fine. Skype is a popular one, but we really don't use it that often. It's mostly FaceTime or Facebook Messenger. Facebook's just doing everything now, so. <laughs> Okay, so another option for communication is WhatsApp. As soon as we got into South America, everybody uses it. So WhatsApp is kind of like the go-to messaging app. Mm -hmm. And even some businesses on their, you know, their telephone number and then maybe their WhatsApp number. It was just really helpful down in South America. So if you're going to be down in that area, probably Central America as well, then you definitely should get WhatsApp. The tricky thing with WhatsApp though is that you have to know the country code because I had an issue with that. I, I was like, you're putting a number in and it's not showing up. I don't understand. So you have to know how to put the country code in first. If you get these little travel books, they'll have different numbers inside here and they'll have the country codes. Our next category, category cuatro, <laughs> is accommodations. We've been traveling for three months and we plan on traveling for up to a year. So part of being able to do that is really budgeting, traveling as cheaply as possible, but maintaining some level of comfort. The one app that we use a lot in South America is Hostel World. People in the States, when they hear the word hostel, I think of the movie Hostel where people are gonna cut out your liver. But it's not like that, I don't, I don't think. You just type in the city you're going to be, and it'll give you um, a list of all the hostels in that area, pricing, and you can book right through there. It also gives you reviews, so that's nice. But if you book through the app, there's an added fee. So it yeah. may be worth actually finding the hostel on your own and calling to book through them so you don't have to pay the fee. I mean, sometimes you can show up and there may not be any availability. Yeah but it Which, might save yourself a couple dollars. Otherwise, sometimes it's good to book ahead because we've done both. Yeah. There's been times where we showed up to a city in Peru, for instance, at four in the morning or five in the morning, it was still dark and we didn't have anywhere to stay because we didn't book the hostel ahead of time. But when you book it ahead, it's just kind of that peace of mind that you get there and you know, you know where you're going. You know where you're going. Yeah. So use Hostel World, find uh, whatever place is best for you. Or you can go to Airbnb, which we use a lot, and we're in one right now. In New Zealand, a lot of the Airbnbs are cheaper than the hostels, or about the same. So it could be worth just, you know, having your own space and mm -hmm. not having to deal with everyone. Sometimes you just like to be alone. You can get a private room or a full home to yourself. I do tend to find more private rooms than homes. I feel like in the States, people have like their whole house available more so. Um, in South America and here, it's pretty much been just like a room. In South America, a lot of the Airbnbs are kind of like mini hostels. Those are our 10 top 10 favorite travel apps. And that's, again, there, there may be a bunch of other great ones for other parts of the world and I'm, when we go there, we'll make another video about all those fantastic apps. But so far, those are the ones that we have loved and used the most. And actually now we have a couple extra bonus ones just because there was, they almost made the cut, but it just... <laughs> we just don't use them as much. Well, one of the first places we stayed at when we arrived in New Zealand was an Airbnb, which was phenomenal. This place is like a hotel. You met this French couple who was at the end of their trip and they had told us about this app, Camper Mate. The reason it's awesome is because it There's has, a lot of reasons. <laughs> it has everything. Everything you want to know or do about New Zealand is on there. It was perfect for us in our camper van, but even if you're not in a camper van, even if you're just kind of exploring one or two cities, or if you're just driving through, it's, it's awesome. How it works is it has different categories and you want to find a campground maybe to stay in, you go to campgrounds and it'll show you all the campgrounds in either the whole North Island or you can zoom in and get it in a specific area. It's also got um, toilets, where to find toilets, where to find Wi-Fi, showers. showers. If you're in New Zealand and you're traveling, Campermate is a must, 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 must have. 
Okay, guys. So, let's bring it in. Oh, wait. Let's bring it out. Mm. Let's bring it back in. <laughs> Those were our apps that we, um, that we use. I hope you guys like them. And I hope you guys get out and travel and explore. And it doesn't even have to be across the world. It can just be in your city, you know? In your neighborhood. In your neighborhood. Walk around, meet people, talk to people. That's the best part, really. Yeah. Oh. And if you have any app suggestions, let us know. We still have a lot of traveling to do, so tips are welcome. Yeah, definitely leave it in the comment section. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, the NYC couple. <laughs> and don't forget to, well, check out one of these videos. Just watch one of them. Click on them, watch it, and subscribe. Bye. Cheers, adios, hasta luego. Luego. Luego, hasta luego.